Do you love making RPGs but still find switches to be a complete mystery? Well, stay tuned because in this video, I'm going to show you everything you need to know to master the use of switches. Now, I'm going to be demonstrating this using RPG developer balking, but the underlying principle is the same across basically every RPG engine. So let's get started. So when I say switch, you might think of the kind that appears in an RPG, like a wall switch or a lever or a button, something the player has to interact with to open a door or activate a bridge or turn on a light. We aren't talking about this basic mechanic however. The switch in an RPG making tool does work like the switches you encounter in a game, but they are used for all kinds of things. Now a switch is just like the name implies. It is a binary setting that is either on or off. It's either zero or one. It is like a variable, but it can only be in one of these two states at any given time, on or off, enabled or disabled. The switch doesn't do anything on its own. It is simply on or off. So why is this valuable? Well, you can use an event or a script to turn a switch on or off, and you can also use the events or scripts to check the state of a switch. So for example, you can make a button that the player has to step on to open a door in a dungeon. The button event is actually changing the state of an existing switch that any other event can access and look at or also change. And the door event is checking the state of that switch in particular to determine if it needs to be open or not. So let's put this into practice. So you can see RPG developer Bakin comes with some button events that by default will work with corresponding door events. We have a blue button, a green button, a red button, a yellow button, and an all-purpose button. We also have a red, blue, yellow, and green door event and an all-purpose door. These are all pre-configured and all set up so all you have to do is drop them onto your map. Let's drag the blue button onto the map. Easy enough. Go ahead and hit OK if you see this screen. Now drag the blue door event onto the map as well and go ahead and test play. All right, with my blue button in place, let's go ahead and step on it. You see a few things happen. My sprite stops, an emote appears over it, a sound effect plays, and the animation of the button is changed to a pushed in position. There's one more thing that happened behind the scenes. What we didn't see is that this action of us stepping onto the button activated a switch. It changed a value behind the scenes, and now you can see that the door will open. The door event checks to see if that same switch has been activated. As long as the switch is off, the door remains shut. But when the switch is on, the door opens. So let's step on the button again. What happened? The door shuts. This has to mean that the switch is now set to off. So now let's take a look at the actual event panels being used, and this is the knowledge that can translate with you into other game engines. So in RPG Developer Bakking, whenever you use one of these templated events, they come with their custom UI to make it really easy to integrate the event onto the map and change its settings and properties. But what we're going to do is click Convert to Custom Event. This option is available with all of the different templated events, and when you click it, you can see what the actual event panels that are being used look like, in what order they're in, what the different sheets are, what the different conditions are, and so on. So this is the heart of the button event, and you can pretty much recreate this event in any RPG engine that has similar event nodes. So first of all, we have two sheets. One's called off to on, and the other one is called on to off. Let's look at the off to on event sheet. That's page one. There is one condition, and that is that the event switch, which is called switch blue, is off. So if switch blue is off, then the following event will execute. And the event will start when the player makes contact with the event. If this condition is not met, the code will not just run automatically. So the first event panel that we see is that switch blue is turned on. Now remember, the condition for this to run is that the switch is off to begin with. So if the switch is on, this particular page of event panels will not run. Then we'll see that there's a sound effect being played, and then we'll see the emoticon displayed on the player, and that is this exclamation point. These are not essential to the function of this button event. We can actually right click and delete them, but I think they're fun, so I'm gonna leave them on here. Now we can also see that the motion that this graphic is set to is called up keep, which I think should have been keep up uh, or stay up or on, but it is static. It just has this nice sort of flashing animation to it. The actual 3D asset or stamp that's being used has four different animations up keep, push keep, where the button is pushed in and stays that way, up, where it comes up slowly, 
and push where it goes in slowly. So we'll change that to upkeep. Let's look at the other event sheet, which is called on to off. The condition for this one is the exact opposite of the other page. It's checking to make sure that the switch blue is on. And then the event that will play out if the player makes contact with the event is switch blue will turn off and then you'll hear a sound effect. This right here, this event panel, event switch on off, this is the heart of the entire button event, and it is present in both of these pages. The fact that this panel is turning this switch on or off is what can make the door open or stay shut on the player. It doesn't have to be switch blue. It can be any of the other existing switches. The only thing confusing about these is that they're already named for you, but you can add your own switch and you can name it whatever you want. You can even leave it as its default name, numeric zero. And if you're checking numeric zero instead of blue button, then you can have your other events check numeric zero to see if it's turned on or off. All right, we'll actually right click on the door event and click edit event script. We can see that it has custom UI as well, but we're going to convert that to a custom event so that we can see its event panels. And a note, whenever you do this, you can't go back to this UI, it'll be lost forever, but you can drag another one of the templated events onto the map and you'll get access to this UI again. Once you become familiar enough with RPG developer blocking, you don't need these UIs anymore. You're probably going to be more comfortable working in this advanced event panel or text system anyway. The door event actually has three pages, switches on, switches off, and already open. So when the switch is on, we're checking two different things here. We're checking to make sure that event switch switch blue is on. And remember that this will turn on if you make contact with the blue button that has the switch blue switch in it. So this condition will already be met. The next condition is that the event switch, uh, <laughs> this local event, which has a really long name, is off. You don't have to worry too much about this. This is included with the door event, uh, but you can include these kinds of local switches to your events. They make it to where one of these is now not true, and so one of the other pages has to execute. Uh, in this case, it would probably be this one, which is called already open, in which the door is already open, and the event switch that is local is on, and switch blue is also on. When these conditions are true, and switch blue is on, which means your player has pushed the button in the dungeon and the event switch is off which by default it will be this is the default behavior of this event now player will make contact with this event the door and you'll hear a sound effect of the door opening the local event switch will turn on and you'll get a change graphic event panel which will change the graphic of this door to open so we can have a visual effect of the door opening and now the event page that will be true will be this one, page three, already open. And it'll just stay like this. There's no logic here. There's no event panels or text of any kind because the door is just open. There's nothing more to do. But when you go back to your button on the map and push it, now switch blue is off. Instead of switch blue being on, which is the condition for these other pages. And that means the switch is off event sheet will be the only one that can run. So that being the case, the door will now be closed. When player makes contact with this event, you'll hear a sound effect. You'll see a message that says you were unable to open the door and the local event switch will be turned off. That might still be confusing. So I'm going to take the other colored buttons and just drop them onto the map really quick. The green button, the red button and the yellow button. I'm then going to take the green button door and place it on the map. In fact, I'll go ahead and place several green button doors on the map so they all look identical to the blue button door. I just want you to remember in your head that all these doors I'm putting back here are the green button door, okay? And I'll even take this one and increase the size of it to where it's huge. Just, just for no reason other than demonstration purposes. All right, the red button door is next and then the yellow button door. I'll put that one here and then the yellow button, I need to put that on the ground. All right, all of these doors are here and they're all closed. They're all gonna give me the exact same message because by default, none of these switches are on. We're gonna press the blue button. And now the only door that's gonna open for me is going to be this blue door. Everything else is going to remain shut because the blue switch is on, the blue button is on, which changes the switch, which is named blue switch on, but the switches called green switch and red switch and yellow switch are not on. Now by stepping on the red button, the red switch is on and this door can open. By stepping on the yellow button, 
the yellow button door can open. So what about all of the other doors, the green switch doors? Let's step on the green switch and see what happens. They should now all open. It doesn't really matter what they look like, where they're positioned on the map, how big they are, anything like that. They're going to open because the green switch is now turned on. Now watch what happens when I step on these buttons again. It's possible to shut the doors. They actually shut instantaneously because their graphic immediately changes instead of waiting on me to approach the door. There's the red door closing because the switch for the red button is no longer on, it is off. So that door is making that check for that switch, seeing that it's off and knowing that it now has to go activate its sheet of event commands where that is the condition. The blue door closes and now all of the green doors are gonna close at once. There we go. And we'll get our unable to open the door message. Okay, so that's using a bunch of preset doors and stuff, but let's see if I can explain this concept one more time. This time, I'm going to make some custom events. I'm gonna click on the stationary speak NPC under the stationary folder in events and just place that right on the map. I'm gonna go ahead and convert him to a custom event. He's very, very simple. He only has one sheet. He has no conditions. All this is perfect. I don't need to add any sheet conditions. I really just want to add one thing to this. I'm going to go into switches and add event switch on or off. All right, we have a lot of existing switches, but I'm going to make a brand new one and I'm just going to call it it talked to person. This is literally just going to work like a wall switch in your room. Whenever you talk to this character, because when player talks to this event, the event switch called talked to person will turn on. It can either be on or off. It doesn't affect anything. It doesn't do anything because I don't have anything checking this switch yet. I'm just turning it on. And that's all we need to know about this event. So let's hit apply and okay. And now that event is there. Okay, I'm going to put another event here and convert it to custom. He's the exact same event, but this time I'm going to add a sheet condition. And for the sheet condition, I'm going to select event switch. And for event switch, I'm going to select talked to person. Basically, this sheet is only going to run if event switch talked to person is on. In other words, we have to talk to the other person for this event to appear on the map. So if I hit apply and okay, there's our second event and now let's test play. All right, we have one NPC, which is exactly what I expected to see. And when we talk to him, we're going to activate the switch talked to person. The second event will pop into the map because now that switch is true. It's set to on. And that's exactly the condition that this second event was checking. It's not a very practical example, but this should show you that there are a lot of different ways to use switches. Every single game you've really ever played has implemented the use of the Switch in one way or another, regardless of whether it was an RPG or not. Because Switches are really just another way of saying Boolean variable, a value that's either zero or one, yes or no, on or off, true or false. But you could really do a lot with Switches. You could tell the player that they've received a key. You could turn on an event switch called player has key. Then you could make sure that a corresponding door is checking for that switch to be on before it allows your player to open it. You could do the same thing with chests. You could have a switch turn on that says you slayed a monster and then go back to a tavern to retrieve the bounty. There are a lot of ways you could, what, what is happening? There are a lot of ways that you could use switches. Now, if you'd like to find the button and door events in Bakken, they're in the traps folder. And there are a lot of other events in this folder that show you how different conditions with sheets work as well as playing with switches and variables. So be sure to give them all a try. And if you'd like to be walked through all of these events, just check out my Bakken series that give you a tour of all the events in RPG developer Bakken. All right, guys, I hope this video was helpful or informative. Please let me know in the comments below. I'll see you next time. And don't forget to subscribe for more premier Bakken education. Bye for now.